You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. Hey everybody, thank you so much for listening to this Counter Network podcast. Before we get to it, I want to talk about our new Patreon that we have started. It is on patreon.com forward slash countoutpod. Uh, we're very excited about it and very excited for all the things to you. Now, we're a small network here, uh, and so you know we're trying our best to, to raise our profile and, and do better things and bring more fun and enjoyment to the wrestling community, wrestling fun. Uh, remember that? Uh, so we're, you know, we're, we're doing our best to get there, but we need your help along the way to help, uh, bring us up even more. So that's where the that Patreon comes in. It's just a little bit of support that you can throw, you know, some money our way to the podcast that we have, you know, Ring Post Radio, Your Dose of Death, How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling, Independent Waters, um, you know, shows of that nature, uh, Okada Shorts. Um, that Patreon is something that we will do. And of course, as a thank you for that support from you, uh, that money uh, is going to go to great people, to good causes, to those people that are doing great stuff for our podcast network. But as a thank you, we got great stuff for you. So we got three tiers on this Patreon. Pa- again, patreon.com forward slash countoutpod. The first tier is the support tier. It's just $3 a month. That's not bad at all. That's so simple and easy you won't even see it. Leave your bank account. And of course, in there, you'll just get a straight-up thank you from us, a shout-out on all of our podcasts, thanking you for your support. And you'll also be able to join that Content a Month Club. So what that club is, is every month we will release one piece of audio, one piece of video, whatever it may be, uh, for the support tier, for the $3 tier, that is typically behind the $5, maybe even the $10 tier of the Patreon so you'll be able to get that just for three dollars. You'll get that three that content for three dollars um, every single month, and at the end of the month, they'll go back behind the other tiers. But if you want it all the time, you can of course get it in the Kayfabe and Shoot tiers. The Kayfabe tier is five dollars, where you'll get that thank you, and you'll get, and that's where you'll find all of our wrestling related content, like the new show from Ring Post Radio. Ryan hasn't seen anything, of course. That's me. Uh, it's the show where I embarrass myself by admitting to the world matches that I had never seen, and me and Scotty Edwards from Ring Post Radio uh, watch it along with you. Again, that's Ryan hasn't seen anything. And in that tier as well, you get the old content from the old network membership, uh, along with special Discord access as well. So go check out the KFAB tier. That's only $5. And in the $10 tier, this is the most expensive tier, the shoot tier, you get that thank you. You get all that older content. You get all those KFAB tier goodies of wrestling-related shows. But this is where you also get our non-wrestling-related content. If you really want to hang out with us, this is where it is. And you can do that through our monthly Jackbox Party Pack games with the whole Count Out family. I mean, not the whole Count Out family, <laughs> whoever's available, I guess. Uh, but with the Count Out family, you can join along with us and play along if possible. And of course, you also get our current running show. It's a and d show, Cantrips and Clotheslines, where you can follow the adventures of um, Andre, uh, The Pebble, uh, John Meowksley, uh, um, uh, uh, May Duskmere, and of course, our wonderful DM, Jared Luthi. Um, some great content, some great shows there, all on our shoot tier, $10. Again, go to patreon.com forward slash countoutpod uh, and join the Countout Network Patreon today. Any of the tiers, we'd be very thankful. Um, it's all going to you know, all going to good podcasters, uh, and they would all very much appreciate it as well. Um, so if you can go and donate and go put money into the Patreon, you'll get some great content out of it, I'm sure you. Uh, so definitely go check that out. We'd very much appreciate it. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, Kanichiwa and what is up the internet? This is your good friend Curtis Spears from the Okada Shorts podcast, and I'm here with you today for another Okada Shorts short 
G1 ring for night 10 of the G1 Climax 32 tournament. This was a five match night for block action and it was uh it was some good ones man. We're going to get into the good, the bad, the pants, the shorts and all of the fun held within. So the very first match of the night was the Great Okan versus Tomohiro Ishii. That's right, we're kicking it off with B-block action. The Great Okan starts by frustrating Tomohiro Ishii, keeping him on the ground, taking away his power base. But even when Tomo gets to his feet, Okan is still besting him with power and striking. Tomo tries to use what little ground skills he has got, but he's woefully underskilled. Uh, late in the match, Okan is still continuing to play Ishii's power game with him, and he's failing at it as a little bit of hubris coming from the great Okan. It's something you can see. It's that folly of youth, uh, as opposed to Ishii's old man strength and his intolerance for failure, his determination never to give up. There's a few really good near falls. Ishii's really starts landing those big power moves late in the game, but Okan pulls one out with the dominator, his face claw choke slam, which is just the baddest move. He he very rarely pulls it out against top competitors. It, it, it's it's a fantastic move. Okan really sells it. And he puts Ishii down looking dominating. I really liked this match. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think uh these two have a a lot of a lot of story that they could possibly tell uh, in the future should they choose to do maybe a never title program between the two of them. I'd definitely be into it. So yeah, two points for the great Ocon, And that's his first points of the tournament, which is pretty fantastic. Next up, we have Tom Lawler versus Toriano, which is a block action, block monster block action. Lawler comes out with his normal swagger. He's got his jeans on top of his trunks. He's got his, you know, cut off denim vest. He's got his hat on backwards. He looks like an absolute shit show and I fucking love it. Yano comes out. He's doing the extra long entrance that he does where the ring announcer just does the spiel for 25, maybe 30 seconds of Liano's introductions. And while he's being introduced, he's got the brand new Chaos uh, Collection DVD that isn't even out yet. It doesn't come out until September, I believe. And Yano is presented with a trade. Lawler would like to trade his copy of Sister Act 1 and Sister Act 2. On DVD for Yano's Chaos DVD. Yano accepts, but there's no DVD in the case. And this pisses off Tom Lawler. They start a clap off. Um, you know, Yano's doing, uh, doing a clap, you know, Toru, Yano. And Lawler's doing the clap along with his theme song. While they're doing this, Yano tries to run up behind Lawler and grab his hair to roll him up. But Lawler is wearing a wig. And he just starts stretching Yano. Yano does the shorts being removed Lawler gimmick thing that uh, Lawler does where he takes off of, it takes off his Daisy Dukes. But L Yano is wearing an exact duplicate of his regular trunks underneath his trunks. He hasn't quite thought it through, though, because now his feet are tied up. <laughs> Lawler has a second pair of trunks underneath his first pair of trunks, which are underneath his Daisy Dukes. It's... An absolute shit show. Royce Isaacs uh, at ringside also removes his track pants to reveal extra track pants. <laughs> La, uh, Yano, I'm, I'm laughing because it's just a fucking shit show. Yano uses the trainer's tape on Isaacs and kind of tapes him up at ringside for a bit. There's turnbuckle shenanigans. Lawler survives three low blows from Yano because he's wearing a cup. And puts the nasty knee right on Yano. So much fun. Lawler's first two points in the in the A block. I was giggling like a schoolgirl. It was so funny. I, I, I told everyone, I said, this is going to be hilarious. Lawler is low-key hilarious as fuck. And, you know, I, I knew that this one was going to be great. And this this did everything that I expected it to. Next up, uh, Sonata versus Tamatanga. They were talking about, uh, they were hyping this up as uh, the battle of two speedsters, two quick, fiery combatants. I don't know if you can really call Sonata a fiery combatant, but I guess he is, if you, if you say so. Tama looks focused. He might be dangerous right now. He looks 100% steady and ready to go. Why does Tamatanga, I just a question, a real quick question. Why does Tamatanga ever wear a shirt? Like, 
not just in the ring, but like if I had that rig, I'd walk around like Randy from Trailer Park Boys every day. Just never wear a shirt. I'd tell everyone I was allergic to shirts. I just, ugh. Anyway, audible gasp when Tama kicks out of the O'Connor roll and seals it with a stun gun. So that was nice. Uh, it was like 15 to f- fifteen to 18 minutes, somewhere in there. Good little 15 minute match. Uh, didn't really need much more that was i mean two talented dudes doing what talented dudes are supposed to do in the g1 i wish sonata could play healy a bit i know you've probably heard me say that three or four times but that would have made this newly minted babyface tamatongo look a little bit more exciting tama versus taichi is his next match and that's going to be really good taichi is going to play it up like a son of a bitch and tama is going to look fantastic i'm really excited for that one i'm kind of sad because i think that that one's going to be one that rafe is going to do i'm not sure Next up was Goto versus Kenta, and I was kind of amped. Kenta's music gets me wired, bro. I, like, it's war rage boner fucking time when Kenta's theme song comes on, because, like, those drums and the, the like, flute behind it or whatever that is, oh, man, I get so amped. I'm like, yes, kick someone in the fucking head. But the match starts out very, very slow. Goto, at one point, catches a ring bell to the dome. The match doesn't pick up from there. There's a couple of ref bumps. Kenta and Goto, like, fighting over who's going to use Goto's stick on the other guy. I don't know what, is it like a prayer stick or something? I have no idea what it is. It's a stick with some ring uh, some rings on it. It makes a, you know, a sound, I guess. Anyway, um... It was clumsy. It wasn't good. They have no chemistry. A go to sleep ends it for Kenta. First two points in the block. Ugh. That's the only sound I had for this one. It was 18 minutes long of just meh. Anyway, uh, I that really should not have been the semi-main. I understand why it was, but it shouldn't have been. The main was great. David Finley versus Will Ospreay for singular control of the top of the D block. And it started hot. Will is pissed. Comes straight down the aisle. Doesn't even, doesn't even get up on the ring post or anything like that. Strips off his ring jacket on the way down. And Finley, you know, while he's getting beaten up by Will still looks sharp. And he he's making the most of this run that they're putting him on. Uh, he's, doing better than he's ever done before in all of his time in new Japan. And he's really excelling. There's lots of will torturing Davey, lots of stretching and Davey can catch with a catch will with a sporadic high impact move to slow will down, but it never lasts very long. He's definitely fighting from underneath in this one. Will, you know, he's, I'm just, I'm on another level from you. You're not worth my time. You have my belt. I'm going to fucking do whatever I can to torture you for it. There's a monstrous superplex that gets a pop from the crowd. There's another time where Will is going for the Oz cutter and Davy catches him in midair with a stunner, which was exciting for me and popped the crowd live too. The crowd was not holding back. They were audibly gasping and popping for f- everything that these two were doing. Davey ducks the hidden blade and immediately rolls Osprey into the trash panda for two points. Finley is tearing it up. And I just want to know right now, who's buying on David Finley? Are you, are you buying on David Finley? Do you think that he's the real deal? Is he going to falter down the, down the stretch? Is there any way that he could be a, a real player towards the end of the tournament. I know that he, I don't think he has a match for the final night of the blocks, but there's nothing to say that he can't be in the mix and watching to to see if uh if he's done enough to come out on top. You know, maybe Will is chasing him and has to beat somebody down the stretch or Juice is chasing him and has to beat somebody on the final night, that sort of thing. Who knows, man? I, I I don't know if it's time to start buying on David Finley. It certainly seems like it might be. I guess we'll see in a couple more weeks. Next block night is going to be August 5th. The matches that we have for that uh, for that show are uh, Rock Hard Juice Robinson versus Huge Huge Yujiro Takahashi, the Tokyo Pimp. That one could have a couple of yuck yucks in it. 
Uh, we've got Tai Chi versus Chase Owens, this like Southern catch wrestling thing that Chase is doing where he's watched a bunch of Memphis tapes. I wonder how that's going to mix with Tai Chi's King's Road style thing that he's doing. We will see. Tetsuya Naito versus Aaron Hanare. A lot of people are saying this is where Naito's tournament is really going to take off. It might be. Uh, I really hope that Aaron Hanare is not the first victim on that road, but we'll see. A block match, Jonah versus Jeff Cobb. Holy shit, reinforce the ring because something's going to give. And we're finishing up with C block action, Tanahashi versus Evil. This one could be a lot of fun. I know that a lot of people shit on Evil main events, but Tanahashi is a master storyteller and I'm sure he's going to get the best out of him. So uh, you'll hear my bad friend Rafe Houston covering that one. And let's look at the block standings as a whole right now. We got a few minutes. A block action, of course, Okada is at the top with six points. Jeff Cobb and Bad Luck fall A with uh, four right on his heels. B block, Jay White undefeated with six points. Tamatanga and Sonata with four right on his heels. C block is a three way tie for top with Zack Sabre Jr., Hiroki Goto, and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Everyone else has two points. And D block action, David Finley, sole control. Block leader David Finley with six points. And only Will Ospreay is right behind him. I don't know what's going on here, man. There are still so many more matches left to come. We're only about halfway through the tournament right now. It's just turned August. It's hot Japanese summer nights and hot wrestling action. And I sound like a total chode when I say things like this, but man, the action is only going to get hotter from here. Okay, I'm going to take a look at our tips after the last night of recording. Rafe was in the lead last time we checked, but maybe I pulled up. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm never going to hear the end of this. In first place... Rafe Houston, your bad friend Rafe Houston with 23 points and bringing up the rear is everybody else. Myself, Trav, Amy, and Mo all on 19. Oh, damn it. He's pulling ahead. He's pulling ahead on all of us. Okay. Well, here's hoping he gets a couple of wrong down the way. We'll see. It's anybody's game at this point, but It's not going to be anybody's game for much longer. We got to start catching up with him. So if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find me at LDestructo83. If you'd like to follow my bad friend, Rafe Houston, you can find him on all the social medias at Faces Feels Cast. If you'd like, you can follow the lovely people who make this podcast happen. That is the lovely people at the Countout Podcasting Network. They're available on social media at Countout Pod. We've actually just launched a brand new Patreon for count out as a whole you can help us out with tiers at as low as three dollars per month three american dollar redues per month one last thing we'd like to turn it over to our good friend owen who wrote us a ripper theme song and if you'd like to get a hold of him to get a theme song for your youtube channel for your podcast for your Twitch stream. If you're a wrestler and you want theme songs made for you, then you can get a hold of him at Riff Your Pod on Instagram and Bandcamp. You're about to hear our theme. That means it's time for me to say good night. So, from all of us here in Old Blighty, where the sun is shining way too much, Jesus, I did not move to England for the sunshine. To all of you out there in Puro Twitter and the internet wrestling community, Keep it right, keep it tight, keep it what? Short.
This has been a Count Out Podcast. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Amanda Bones. And I'm Ashley. Of How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling, the podcast on the Count Out Wrestling Podcast Network, a weekly show where we talk about all of our favorite things, babes, blood, and brutality. We also talk about other fun things, like is Kenny Omega finally too tan? And how much blood is too much blood? Because that looks like way too much blood. So join us on the adventure of teaching me, Amanda Bones, about wrestling.